I pulled my trailer into the shop. Uh, of course, I can't get it in here using a pickup truck uh, or using my pickup truck. I have to use that uh, forklift with the adapter that I built for it um, to be able to maneuver it in. Um, I've gone through that before. It's because of the trailer width and the door width. There's only six inches to spare between the uh, door and the trailer. And then there's not enough room in the back to uh, be able to maneuver uh, the trailer, the pickup truck tied together between uh, the railroad tracks and the door opening. So I got it into the shop. Um, what I did is uh, the bottom of these ramps get really beat up when you uh, load stuff on it. Uh, scrapes all of the paint off. Um, originally they said it was supposed to be powder coated but uh, I'm not really sure of that um, but anyways I, I uh, painted uh, both of these the uh, bottom of these um, that's the part that gets beat up because that's the part that's in contact with the ground or pavement when you're loading the vehicle up so I got them painted up but the thing, what I'm thinking about doing is um, adding some more running lights to it. Um, the amber running lights. Uh, in the back, there is uh, one red light on the side. Um, up on the, on the sides, if you get towards the middle, uh, this amber light is a combination running light and a turn signal. And then uh, the other one is up here at the front. Um, so what I was thinking about doing is uh, adding a couple um, into the thing um, just to make the trailer at night uh, look better. You have the more of those running lights on um, but it depends I'm gonna go down and take a look at them um, what this is is tube steel and mainly the new lights for um, um, trailers are have just a rubber grommet around the opening and um, the light just kind of sits into the uh, the rubber grommet. It's held in like that. Um, so all you would have to do is, uh, if I can get that style light, all I'd have to do is drill a hole, uh, probably with a hole saw, into the uh, tube steel for the size of that rubber grommet and then um, just capture the wires that are inside of that tube steel and there is wires inside the tube steel. Um, let me take you over on the other side and I'll show it to you. You can take these lights out and there's uh, the wiring is just in there. So, I again, I'm I'm going down to a trailer supply um, company. I, I've got to go out and run a couple of errands this morning, so I'm just going to stop by there, see how much they are. I was thinking about um, two-inch diameter um, LED lights, and uh, I'll see how much they are, see how much it would cost, and. Um, doesn't really serve any effective purpose other than make it look better at nighttime. But I'll, I'll let you know. I'll bring you back. So I told you in a previous video or a previous clip that I might be uh, installing more lights. Well, I, I decided to uh, do it. Um, so here's what they're going to be looking like. Um, you have to drill a hole in that rail. Um, this rubber grommet goes in there and then the light pops into the grommet. Now one of the things uh, 
um, this is a bag from, I think. or no, this is a bag from the light. This is a bag from the grommet. Whatever it is, they don't tell you. <clears throat> Apparently, these grommets just fit in a standard size hole, but they don't tell you what that hole has to be. Just they probably assume when you're buying this thing, it's a replacement light for whatever there is. But, anyways, um, there it is, and I'm gonna put them on. Um, let me, I'm gonna turn you off here and uh, um, I'll bring you back and show you how. Okay, so it. here's the side of the trailer and there is the first light. So what I'm gonna do is go down, skip one. There'll be one here. I'll put one here, um, skip one. There'll be one here, um, uh, skip one. And then there's the existing light there. So then I'll skip one and there will be a light here and then skip one and back here um, I'm probably going to put the light right here I don't want to get in um, to where this joint has been welded um, a lot of times the heat from the weld will harden that steel up and you'll have a trouble drilling it and uh, I, I kind of figured I'd put it up here in the flat spot before it starts tapering down. Now I bought enough lights to, so there would be there one there, um, we'd call it here, you skip one and have one down here. Um, I might kind of center it up and put it under here. But anyways, I bought enough lights to do that. So I'm not really sure if I'm going to put one a running light on the the down tube or the dovetail part of it. Um, but anyways, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I just got to go out and get a hole saw. Now what I did is, uh, and let me turn you off and I'll show you. I'll, uh, Over here at the go. welding table, um, what I did is I had a piece of uh, steel. Um, and I had an existing, or I had a two and a half inch hole saw. And um, I kind of tried to measure this thing, and it's pretty hard to measure because it actually gets tucked in behind there. Um, it The steel goes in behind a lip on this thing, goes in between there, if you can see that. Um, so it was kind of hard to measure so I thought it was two and a half I put it in there and two and a half works but there's a little slop in it and it doesn't cover it right so what I'm going to do is go out and buy a two and a quarter inch hole saw and um, that'll work and then I'm going to start doing that okay I kind of know this is going to be hard to see but uh, I've got it in the shop now this is the side before I install the lights so um, maybe sometime I'll uh, shoot a video at night time when the trailer is outside so um, there's the trailer um, on the original side so there's a red light in the back um, kind of this uh, combination running light and turn signal part way down and then the one um, amber light up in front on the side rail now let me take you around to the other side that I've got completed so here it is And then that's the, this is the original light. So, there it is. I think it looks kind of a lot better. Well, I, I think it looks a whole lot better. Um, I kind of like that angled one going down too. It kind of... Uh, draws into the angle of the uh, 
dovetail on the trailer. But anyways, um, there it is. Looks good as far as I'm concerned. Got to run out and get some more connectors, electrical connectors. But uh, bring okay, back. so here is the other side done. Um, so both sides are completed now. Now on this side, I uh, did it a little differently, and let me just pan you down here. Um, and again, the last light is a existing red light um, down there. But um, this side I did differently because um, the wires inside of the tube, the existing wires inside of the tube, to begin with there was two of them, um, and they were kind of like cords. Um, kind of like an uh, extension type cord cable. It wasn't an extension cord, but it was that tight fitting, uh, rubberized, um, coating on the outside of it. Now the wires were strung through the center of it, uh, as you probably know how you can buy that like that. But anyways, um, so I, it would have been a real pain to um, a two and a quarter inch hole into the tube steel. It would have been a real pain to try. It was hard to, I, I did cut it open. I tried to pull it out a little bit um, and, and it's pretty rigid. Um, so it would have been a real kind of pain to try and get it out, cut that outer sheeting off of uh, the wires expose the wires inside of that. So what I did was, um, I took a common point, this point right here, this existing um, running turn signal light, and tied uh, wires. So I ran um, two um, 14 gauge wires up to the front and tied these two lights into that. And then I did the same thing, ran the 14 gauge wire back and tied these three lights into that. Um, thus avoiding trying to deal with that coating on the existing wires. Um, one of the things that I should note is that uh, on this PJ trailer, if you go on the website, they give you a wiring diagram for it and they tell you what the color code of the wires are. And um, the running lights um, are a brown, and that was uh, indicative of both sides. I had brown as running lights, but white is supposed to be ground. And we did have a white wire on this side, but on the other side that I showed you, uh, first of all, in the previous video, um, previous um, clip, um, it, there was no white wire over here. It was a yellow wire. And yellow wire was supposed to be for the right-hand turn signal. Um, and on this side, I'm sorry, the left-hand turn signal. On this side, on the right-hand side, the green is the right-hand turn signal. But there was a yellow wire. So I had both yellow and green on this side. And I'm thinking, and no white. So I just assumed, and I was correct in my assumption, that um, the yellow wire was the ground wire. Um, but anyways, there it is. It's done. Um, I'll bring it back for the next thing that's on my agenda. I'm here in the drill press. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna do an extensive video about it, it's just a brief thing that I kind of found. Um, when I came down, I was uh, doing a little cleaning on the base and I had noticed a, a divot in the base and I kind of thought maybe somebody had been drilling something on the base and just drilled down in towards the base uh, a little bit. But it, I was uh, doing a little wire brushing on this thing um, and I started uh, poking at it with a clean-out tool, and it turned out to be a hole. Um, 
and I do not the inside of the hole and I'm not really sure if you can see it but there's green paint on the side of the hole and the hole is rough um, so I don't think it was somebody drilling down through it uh, because there is a cross member on the bottom of it and um, it, it looks like um, it was uh, it wasn't drilled I mean um, there is a, a chip in there um, but it's a, got a flat bottom or a flat top on that cross member so I uh, two things or a bunch of things lead me to believe that the hole was original one is it's an odd size it's uh, inch and 13 16 two it's rough the hole the inside of the hole is rough like a rough casting um, and because of that cross member on the bottom of it, it, it all kind of bears um, that the hole was original to it. Um, I'm just not really sure what it was for. Um, was there some kind of a pillar that went there and maybe a collar that went around the pillar uh, with a tensioning bolt on the collar that uh, held, held the pillar in place? Um, I'm not really sure what it's for um, but anyways just a quick update on it um, I'm will be doing probably a series on this uh, drill press but uh, you know well I'm kind of in exploration figuring out what I'm gonna do as far as paint stuff like that goes I'll just keep posting updates in uh, my shop update video. I'm going to give you a little further update on this drill press. Um, one of the things that I did after I shot that previous clip about the hole in the base plate, um, I decided to take one of the belt covers off. And as you probably have seen in, in previous videos on the uh, drill press, there's a name tag on the front of the uh, thing that we thought uh, had uh, been uh, stripped off and you were unable to read it. Now these name tags are probably uh, about six and a half feet off of the floor. Um, so uh, they are hard to read without getting up on a letter so, or a ladder. And I'm assuming that everybody thought that the, bell or the uh, tags had been, um, the lettering had been stripped off. Well, lo and behold, when I took this off, I had, was talking about the inside of the, the belt cover and, and how it looked like it had been used, even though Adam said that it, he doesn't remember it ever being used. Um, I flipped the, the cover over, and on the tag, I saw a number. And as you can see, there is a number, 2004. And then I got up on a ladder and took a look at the other tag and in Boston it is 2005. So I'm kind of thinking those are serial numbers. But what really piqued my interest about this whole thing is if you kind of look, um, and I'm going to move the camera around so that you can get some different angles, but right there you can definitely see an O. And before it, and over here you can see some other lettering and down here um, definitely there's an NC which probably was an INC or incorporated um, but there is lettering that is still visible under this tag and I'm kind of thinking this is gray paint somebody painted gray paint over the top of the tag so I um, talked to a guy, uh, another YouTuber by the name of Brad Jacobs, and he has a YouTube channel, it's called Basement Shop Guy. Um, he, he is very good uh, at restoring and stripping and repainting old machines. Um, so I kind of uh, talked to him and he suggested that I use citrus strip on it and uh, 
um, go over it and I might be able to get this coating off without harming the original paint on the tag if there is any left. Um, even if I can expose the tag, the tag might be shadowed where the original paint was so enough that kind of what I'm looking for is a model number, uh, a model number that I can reference so if I want to try and get parts for this machine um, I have a reference point to uh, go from, a model number reference point to go from. So anyways, um, more of this on the series on the drill press when it starts.